So it's been a bumpy ride for AstraZeneca over the last year. Today, another setback, the drug maker's antibody cocktail. Apparently only 33% effective in preventing COVID symptoms in people who had been exposed to the virus. Let's deal with the details of this, then we'll talk about a few other things. Sam Fazelli, Bloomberg Intelligence, senior pharmaceutical analyst, joining us as ever uh, to update us on this. So this was, this is not a vaccine, this was a therapy that basically you stick in your arm once you've got it. It provides you with antibodies once you've been exposed. Walk me through the science behind this. Is this important? Is this not important? Right, so you take your vaccine, as you and I have both, Guy. Yep taking our vaccines, it induces two parts in your immune system. First one is the antibodies, which everybody now knows, and the other one is T-cells, nothing to do with the Astra cells. So what Astra has done here, and Regeneron did it, Eli Lilly did it, Glaxo's trying to do it, is make some antibodies and give it to you, right? So the aim in this trial, in fact, was to prevent an infection. So you and I live in the same house, you get it, I'll go and get the shot make sure I don't get right. the infection. That's where the 33% came from. But they're also trying it after you're infected, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it, it, is, it is something that, 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 that is useful, especially for people who can't take a vaccine or have a breakthrough infection, for example. But it didn't work out this time, except there was a nugget in there that was quite interesting. Which nugget? <laughs> oh, which nugget? That, that, that nugget. I told you about it earlier, no? Oh, <laughs> the no, nugget no, no. Tell me is... <laughs> If you keep going down the table that they presented, it wasn't necessarily part of the trial design, but there was enough numbers in there to look for, and it showed that there was, if, if people were negative at the time of receiving the antibody injection, i.e. not infected, and about seven days afterwards, their protection against infection was ni at 92% efficacy. Now, that is a good number. If they can repeat that in the next trial called Provent, then you have a product that you can see, I'll take an intramuscular shot. Remember, it's not an IV or anything like that. And I'm protected for one, two, three, four months. Hmm. Let's talk about the Public Health England data that was revealed last night um, at around six. The, the core of that data was that the, the shots that we're dishing out at the moment are effective in dealing with the Delta variant, which is the cause for concern at the moment. However there was quite a big degree of variance between the Astra shot and some of the mRNA shots in terms of the, the kind of the, the, the certainty surrounding the data. Your conclusion from this is that those of us that have had two shots of Astra are ultimately going to need a third shot of an mRNA shot, of an mRNA vaccine. Well, so let's look at it this way. The, the, if, if the world continues to run by counting cases, the data so far suggests, and it wasn't in the data last night, which is a bit questionable, why didn't they put the effectiveness against infection yep. in there? It, it was, was hospitalizations, hospitalizations was right. Why didn't they put that in there? I don't know. But we know from Scotland, and we know from their previous data, it's about 60% with the AstraZeneca vaccine. I don't want to be protected at 60% while we go into the winter, right? So I really would like to have another shot, probably, given data that we've seen again, separately, an mRNA shot gives you a real big boost in antibodies to your immune system. That's what I'm talking about. Um, hey, Sam, as we round out here, um, uh, it, potentially the EU is going to add the U.S. to its white list. The U.S. is going to have to reciprocate uh, at some point so I can go there without quarantining. Should I go and visit Europe? Is this going to be safe? Well, if you look at the trajectory of cases, again, we're back to cases, counting cases, in Europe, you find that they're coming down really nicely, a beautiful slope that I would love to ski down if that ever happens <laughs> again in the winter. Um, <laughs> in Germany, in Spain, in Italy, in France. I haven't looked at every single country, but that's looking great. Vaccinations are on the up. So unless something goes wrong and I'm a little bit worried about Spain, the latest data I saw, about 10% of roughly 900 genomic sequences were the Delta variant. Unless that really gets problematic, I think that would be a really fine thing to do.